Hello friends, Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are talking about the spell Summon Aberration. Ah, huzzah! Another summon spell. This one's, yeah. like, this one's sweet. You like this one? Yeah. I don't know, I was... I'm going to need some convincing, because I, I, I took a cursory glance at it, and uh didn't seem all that exciting, but... Tell me why I'm wrong. All of what? the summon spells look exactly the same until you get into like I know, a but real I was looking nitty gritty. At the, I was looking, trying to look at the nitty gritty, and uh, oh. I don't know. All right, go ahead. What, what, sure. Give it to us. This is like all of the summon spells. It has almost exactly the same text as the rest of them, uh, and it's cast time of an action. Range 90 feet. Verbal somatic material components. This time, you need a pickled tentacle and an eyeball and a platinum in, uh, inlaid vial worth at least 400 gold, which... Godspeed on finding that organically. Uh, <laughs> concentration up to an hour. Uh, you call forth an aberrant spirit. It manifests in an unoccupied space you can see within range. The corporeal form uses the aberrant spirit stat block, which you can find below. When you cast a spell, choose Beholderkin, Slod, or Star Spawn. The creature resembles the aberration of that kind, which determines certain traits in the stat block. This creature disappears when it drops to zero or when the spell ends. The creature is an ally to you and your companions. In combat, it shares your initiative. It takes a turn after you. It obeys your verbal commands. No action required by you. If you don't issue any, it dodges. At higher levels, it gets bonus stuff. Um, this is a way to get a Beholder ally. This is a way to get a Star Spawn ally, which is like, I'm guessing, like, from the color out of space, Elder Torum nonsense monsters is what I'm getting the gist of. Um, you get Slod, which are like a defined weird toad creature that for some reason are aberrations. Um... The important bit is that each one has like a, a little bit of variation. So Beholder can, for example, have a 30-foot hover speed, which is denoted by parentheses in the single Aberrant Spirit stat block. Um, the Slod have regeneration, which is pretty spicy. Uh, Star Spawn get Whispering Aura, so at the start of each of their turns, each creature within five feet of the Aberration makes a whiz save or takes 2d6 Psychic damage, provided the Aberration isn't incapacitated. That's super spicy. Um, they all have multi-attack, so because it's a fourth-level spell, they get two attacks around. Um, if it's sixth level, they get three. If it's eighth level, they get four. So there's some reason to upcast this. Um, um, Slod, they all have unique attacks. Slod get claws um, that turn off healing and do a d10 plus 3 plus spell level, so a d10 plus 7, which is like a bus. Um, Beholders get eye rays, which are 150 foot range, psychic damage, beams of death. They do a d8 plus uh, damage. Uh, and then psychic slam is the star spawn. It gets a melee attack roll for a d8 plus uh, psychic damage. These three might look like kind of samey. There's not a whole lot of reason to consider both. However, their unique traits... I think really make them stand out as interesting options, especially at the fourth level, because this is still relatively early. This is the low mid tier. This is where you're getting your first fourth level spell thought, seventh level. These are some particularly potent effects that I think you can have a lot of fun building around and playing with for a long period of time. All right. Well, I'm seeing a bunch of damage. Um, what are the effects you're talking about? Regeneration on slot is my first yeah. one that I'll point to. So these things start with 40 HP and regeneration gives them a five HP at the start of its turn. That's Everyone. a lot of regeneration, yeah. It's a lot of regeneration, which makes them pretty cool little frontline tanky monsters. Uh, that is pretty fun. Beholderkin's 30-foot hover, these things are medium, which means small creatures can ride them. Do you want to ride around on a beholder and shooting lasers at people? That sounds pretty sweet to me. And that is definitely in the wheelhouse of what a beholder can, can do. It's strength 16, so even medium creatures it can lift pretty easily, and the hover is not going to have it go down because hover's a magical kind of flight, so you can like hover around on your beholder can, friends. Use them as stepping ladders or whatever. Um, hover's a really useful trait to have attached to something as long, alongside the 30-foot fly speed, right? You can just fly around and navigate. If you consider this also like a fly effect, this is an hour-long duration companion with fly and that's very useful right, um that's, that's a selling point okay yeah those are the two that definitely have like those are the selling points of beholder really is the hover the uh, the other thing is like have it's the ranged attacker of the group and 100 yeah. 150 foot range multi-attack for a d8 plus seven it's it's great it's bananas you'll always be happy to be like oh yeah the beholder's doing the thing that the ranger's doing but he's looking cooler doing it um and that's what it'll feel like a lot of the time uh, then finally, we have the star spawn, which I think is the most interesting only because it's the weirdest. So it doesn't have a way to maintain its HP. So it's kind of like a ticking time bomb that you send into the middle of things because it also doesn't have ranged attack rolls, only on melee attack rolls. And it doesn't regenerate or anything, but it does have the whispering aura. So at the start of each of those turns, in addition to the two attacks it's making, each creature within five feet of it makes a whiz save or takes 2d6 psychic damage, which means you can just send this into a ball of things. And if it lives two or three rounds, it's doing a huge chunk of damage, like a, like a fireball almost, but it's also a summonable companion that does other things. You can prepare this as an AoE damage spell and get a single round of attacks with it. The 2d6 extra bonus damage 
you get it to soak 40 damage, you're really happy with that outcome. Um, and all of that coalesces in one spell. You get all three of these neat little modes of having this high damage, run in there and explode little fourth level creature. You probably only want to do that with the fourth level spells. Like you probably don't want to spend higher level spells on that effect. The star spawns probably mitigate just fourth level. But then the slot, upcasting slots give a 10x bonus HP per level. So a six level slot is 60 HP, we're generating five HP around with multi attack. That turns off healing, making three attacks. Like that seems pretty good. A beholder can making three range attacks each round seems pretty great. Although, again, it doesn't get out with hit points as much, but that's still quite good. I don't know. I think regeneration and the hovering um beholderkin i think those are really fun and i think these though you'll find times where the star spawn it like really stands out as a it wanted and killed all the kobolds and that's gonna be neat i think you're gonna be like yeah this thing was powerful in this moment this thing they each have their own clear window area effect frontline damage frontline tank and ranged uh hovering ally all of those i think make this really distinct spirits within the same spell all right yeah i agree with all that um Still, this when I think to the other summoning spells like from Tasha's, this uh, this one still feels a little. I mean, especially because it's aberrations. I, I was expecting huge things from it, but uh, and these are cool effects, but uh, yeah, compared to the other ones like with the Fey or the uh, Fey's even some weird stuff. Yeah, that's what I. That's what I, I wanted more weird stuff. I think that's fair. I think Whispering Warda would have benefited a lot from being an AoE fear instead. Um, mm -hmm. I think there could have been some some neat things you could have done with conditions on some of these things. It's I think the travesty to me is that the I raise the beholders do always do psychic damage. I really wish you just rolled the eight and determined which of the I beams it did. Yeah, you got a little they damage wheel. I think. Things. Yeah, that doesn't empower the spell at all, but it definitely lets it feel more like a beholder. It doesn't necessarily feel that beholdery right now. It feels like a giant floating ball. Um, that does like psychic damage, and that's not like the the iconic things to be holders like the anti magic cone or the um a lot of the other little neat pieces you get on beholders that are monsters like they're very eye rays and there's different stock abilities that all is lost here. Um, and, and even slot, I mean, I I, I know I don't know much I about know slot. Nothing from about slot. Fifth edition, I've never but run I, them. I've never I, seen I, people I, run them. I just know they're toad ish. But they, they like I don't know if it's true in fifth edition, but in third edition, they, they if they scratch you with their claws, they'll like plant eggs inside you and stuff, and that's how new slot are created. And, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, this just turns off healing, which is yeah. hmm. which is I, I don't know, yeah, probably not going to come I, into play too much against trolls and other slot. That's a banger. <laughs> that's probably yeah. it. Um, but you care because they have regeneration. That's the reason you would take slot anyway. Yeah, that's but I, mean, or I think against, that's definitely a union uh, of effect to justify them. Against a, 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 um, a rival party, perhaps, where you know, they'd be casting healing spells on each other. Sure. Come into play. I don't think that happens that often. No. But um, yeah, no, all right, you're right. This is a, a cool and powerful spell. It's just not as weird as I want it to be. I, I actually think, like, all of the summon spells fall into that category for me where it's like man i wish these just had like an extra two lines three lines of text to really let the flavor of each spirit shine a little bit more like mm -hmm. in um in this specific case like we talked about with beholders i think them having just an extra line that lets you vary the damage types and the eye stocks would go a long way i think the star spawn doing more horrific stuff would go a long way i think there if there were lines that were just when you could like Maybe there's a new aura that you can unlock when you cast this a six level spell for each of the different modes. That would really make the spell help feel like you're getting more and more powerful entities as opposed to just a more attacks and more hit points, which is what you're functionally getting. There could have been ways to do that. However, the spell's also already like two pages long on its own. So I get that there was some conceits made to not have it be ridiculously complicated yeah. while also reeling in the conjure spells. Yeah, I think that was... yeah, no, you get them out of the player's hand or you get them out of the monster manual and they're super busted and do all the busted things that all those monsters always do. Because that, that was kind of the point of these spells is to make conjuring spells less complicated. But even but we we're saying about the beholder, I mean the regular beholders, they're different eye beams. Do they just do different damage types? Or I thought they some had of them different do different effects. damage. Some of them turn off healing. Some of them charm. Some of them paralyze. Right, so right, they, right. They have a bunch of different modes. That's what um, I want. I think that's a spell called Summon Beholder, and it's just the Beholder, and it's just those kind of status effects. I think that needs to be denotably different. I think it's hard to justify that existing because it's so niche. 
Um, if you wanted to summon specifically a beholder, I agree that that'd be cooler. I agree that, that fits a more specific archetype and specific fantasy. I I don't know, like Bob, you're already kind of turned off by spells whenever you see them being this long, right? Like you see complex yeah. magic and you're like, this is a lot of work. And I agree with that a lot of times. Sometimes I look at spells and I'm like, oh god, this is just this is a lot of effort. And I think that these are about as digestible as they can be while also making you get a minute like a little taste of each feeling you get a little bit of these are the distinct creatures i think it's really hard to ask more out of these designs especially with how satisfying they actually are using to play like you feel powerful when you're using these summit effects because they give you a bunch of free attack rolls yeah yeah this i mean fourth level this is a this is pretty up there it's quite good it's not as weird as I, I agree. I, I want it to be weirder. I don't know if we can ask it to be weirder, though. Yeah. Guess not. I'm I'm going to ask anyway. Nah, that's fair. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got anything else to say about it? It's a four out of five. This is a great, like all the Tatra spells, this one's excellent. Uh, this is one of my favorites, if not my favorite of the bunch. I think this spell's super neat. I like the idea of the slot. I like the idea of the star spawn. I like the idea of the beholder. And if I like all three, it's a winner in my book. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a three because uh, it's not weird enough for me. That's but cool. still, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, that's probably unfair, but uh, tough. This is my channel. Yeah, your all channel, right. your rules. All right, that was Summon Aberration. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Until then... Yeah, which of the Summon you... spells is your favorite? What ones do the coolest things? What one delivers on the fantasy the best? I'm, all these are questions I'm interested to know. Oh, you're talking to the... the uh, I'm talking the to the audience. Comment all right, good, yes, good. commenters, please. Oh, shit, Sam, don't put me in the spot like that. Commenters. I don't remember all these spells. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yes, let us know. Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.